countryside has witnessed some extraordinary unearthly events. You see, from here, scientists are busy exploring the outer limits of the universe. At the centre of activities here at the Jodrell Bank in Cheshire is the famous Lovell Telescope, an engineering marvel. Built in 1957 and named after its designer, the pioneering radio astronomer Sir Bernard Lovell, its bowl, or dish, is an astronomical 250 feet in diameter. Here in the control room, I've come to find out a little bit more about the secrets of the universe and talk to astronomer Professor Ian Morris. Hello. Hello, Paul. Welcome. Thank you very much for taking time oh, it's a out real to pleasure. talk to us today. Really I've got is. to say, look at the view from out the window. Doesn't it look amazing? <laughs> I mean, it's over 50 years old, but it's still the third largest radio telescope in the world. And I don't think any bigger than that will ever be built. No. So it's great the to Lovell, have you here. The Lovell Telescope, as you say, it's a radio telescope. What exactly does that mean? Well, it means that instead of picking up light waves, which we all mm. see, we actually pick up radio waves, which we can't see, very similar to those used by mobile phones and satellite television. So these waves sort of hit that massive, great big dish. Exactly. And they, so do they bounce around in it till they get to that focal well, point? Well, they bounce point? just once, basically. Oh, straight right. up to the focus, and that's where we collect them and amplify them and bring them down. Big tunnel comes from the telescope underneath the ground into our receiver rooms where we analyse them. Wow, look and at it. as the telescope can move, it's got uh, motors that drive it round in azimuth. I and see motors that. at the top of the towers. In fact, the, the, the actual gears and the racks that drive it are second hand. They came from some battleships. Really? They were actually gun turret mountings. So by going up and down and around one way and the other, we can actually track radio sources across the sky. Great thing about radio waves, because they're so long, mm. much longer than light, they can travel through dust. We can look at the heart of galaxies you could never see with optical telescopes. Wow. I mean, I know it's one of our greatest scientific instruments, but just looking at it, it's an architectural gem, isn't well, it? Well, it really is. It's a grade one listed building, yes. and there's some thought that before too long, the site here might become a World Heritage Site. Oh, that could be so good. So it's become an icon of British science and technology. Yeah. But the great thing is it's still doing things that we never even thought that could be done when it was first built. During the war years, Dr Bernard Lovell had been involved in the development of radar. He had the idea that sporadic echoes sometimes received by military radars might be the result of cosmic rays entering the atmosphere. After the war, he wanted to research the subject further, but it soon became clear that a very sensitive radio telescope would be required, and he set about creating one. Ten years later, his dream became a reality. But in the early days, to some, the telescope resembled a rather large white elephant, and its future looked uncertain. We were very much in debt at the time. It had cost a lot more than it should have done for various reasons, and it was Sputnik that saved us. You might remember it was the time, 57, when the Russians launched Sputnik 1. Mm -hmm. um, the military were awfully keen to know if you could detect these sort of rockets because they were really designed to carry nuclear bombs. Yeah. And we were able to track the rocket that actually put Sputnik in orbit as it went over the Lake District. The press realised that here in the United Kingdom we have something that was unique. And so everyone, you know, looked after us and the money was found. So, in fact, for a while, secret until recently, this was Britain's early warning radar mm -hmm. from about 1960 to 1963. And that included the Cuban Missile Crisis. Wow. This enabled the telescope to continue its pioneering work and we have it to thank for many other scientific firsts. It really has had a magnificent uh, time. It's made some great discoveries. I was going to say, what, what, what are its discoveries? Well, about to very early on, it actually picked up signals from the most distant objects that we knew in the universe. Um, if the universe it actually has a, a radius of about 14,000 million light years, and we were picking up objects that are about halfway towards the Earth's universe, and these were the most distant objects known at that time. They're called quasars because they look like stars. They appeared so okay. small. So that was great. It's had a great role in the discovery of objects called pulsars. Yeah. When a massive star comes to the end of its life, the core collapses down under gravity till it's about the size of Manchester, 20 kilometers across. Now, something big going around slowly if you make it get smaller, it spins up, like an ice skater bringing her arms okay. in. And there's an incredibly powerful magnetic field. 
that sends out beams of light and radio waves that sweep across the, across the sky, just like an interstellar lighthouse. Now, each time the beam crosses our telescope, we get a little pulse of energy. And if you apply that little pulse to a loudspeaker, you can hear the clicks. Got Listen you. to the very first one. As in pulses. Absolutely, that's why they called it. Very, very regular. It's like a metronome. Exactly. And in fact, when these were first picked up, they couldn't believe that any natural phenomena could give rise to them. Yeah. They thought it might be ET phoning home. And in fact, Jocelyn Bell, who discovered it, called it LGM-1, Little Green Men 1. Gosh. So we've, we've had some wonderful times with this telescope. It's been a wonderful 40-odd years. Well, how fascinating was that? Now that we've sorted out our quasars from our pulsars, I think it's time to beam straight back to the valuation day.